Hi, this is Paige Hudson. I wanted to take you through the activity guide and the SIDAT logbook that you've just received. We're going to be going through the zoology ones, uh, but if you have a different guide, it'll be set up in the same manner, so you'll see the same pieces that we're going to talk about today. So let's dig right in. The first thing we have is our copyright policy. You are free to make copies for your use within your immediate family, but if you need to do more than that, uh, you can contact us for either a co-op or a school license. You could do that at support at elementalscience.com. Then we have our table of contents. If you have an ebook, these links are clickable, which makes it easy for you to navigate. There's a chapter for each chapter in the novel. So the chapters correspond, which makes it easy for you to figure out which week you're working on. In the student logbook, we're going to have very similar, the copyright policy, and then theirs is just going to have a much simpler table of contents based on the area that they're in. So each set of chapters that share scientific information will have a set of corresponding logbook pages. So the next thing that we're going to find is the introduction, and it'll talk a little bit about the philosophy behind the guide and what each chapter contains. Now, in the novel, the first and the 18th chapter don't actually share that much scientific content. The main heart of the program is in the second through the 17th chapter. So those chapters are going to be most similar to what each chapter contains, same within the SIDAT logbook. But you will find information for what chapter to read out of the novel. You'll find additional encyclopedia readings for each chapter and additional library books. Then you'll find some information about notebooking, what you want to have your students, what they could write down in their notebook, vocabulary options, uh, scientific demonstrations. You find additional projects and memory work. So copy work and dictation, or you could use these passages for memory work. So all that'll be in each week, and you can read more about what each section contains in this intro material. And then a quick word about the logbook and our final thoughts. Of course, if you have any questions, you can contact us at support at elementalscience.com. And then you'll have the book list, the main text, uh, the novel, the Sassafras Science Adventures novel you're reading that corresponds with your guide. This is absolutely necessary. You have to have it. The scientific information is in that book, so you need to have that novel with you. And then there'll be some optional encyclopedias. If your students are interested in learning more, here's some encyclopedias we recommend reading with them. So you can add these in or you can just ignore this section and then recommended resources. Of course, you can make your own SIDAT logbook if you want, but we've provided one for you. And then this link you are going to want to bookmark. Anytime there is a link in this guide, it will be on this page. So every link you need to click on is here on this volume one link and any corrections uh, that we know about when people let us know, we will add them to this page as well. So you want to bookmark this link and make sure you have it handy to use as you go through the year. Next, we'll have an additional library book list for you to use if you want to get all the books in one shot. If you want to do a you know, couple weeks in advance from your library, you can, you've got all the books listed right here. Then the next thing we'll have is the demonstration supplies. We do offer an experiment kit that covers two novels. So for instance, the year one kit would cover the zoology and the anatomy guides. So you can see it's just simple stuff that you probably already have around your house for the most part, but we do offer these things in a kit to make it easier for you. If you want to collect everything at once, it's all here for you, or you can collect week by week. And then we've also listed project and activity supplies by chapter. If you're going to do these projects, a lot of them are artsy type projects. So all the supplies for those are listed here as well. And then we have a list of the characters for you. This is also in the front of the novel, but just for your convenience, in case you need to know or refer back to what some of the characters are in the different chapters. And then we get into the heart of the guide. And these are the chapters. Chapter one, as I said, is a little bit different than the following chapters because it's more of an introduction into the storyline, but you're still gonna have the supplies you need each week for the demonstration or for the project and the activities. And then you will have a two day schedule and a five day schedule. And these are independent week by week. So if you wanna do two days, one week and five days the next week, you can certainly do that. Basically what's covered in day one on the two day schedule is covered in day one, is broken into day one and two on the five day schedule and day two and so on and so forth. Okay, so after you find the schedules, 
will have the science oriented book section and notebooking and I'm going to go ahead and go to the chapter two so we can see a little bit more about how this works. Okay, so you'll see those experiment demonstration supplies here, the project activity supplies you need for that week at a glance, and you'll see your possible schedules. They'll all be here. And then there's also a chapter summary for you because sometimes you might have your student reading the novel on their own. And so we provide you with a chapter summary just in case you didn't read the chapter yourself so you'll know what's going on. And then the next thing you'll see in your chapter or your weekly plans is the science-oriented book sections. So you'll have the living book spine, which is chapter two of your novel, and then you'll have optional encyclopedia readings, and it'll tell you what section they are so you know which subject they're gonna coordinate with, so you can pick and choose from those. And then additional library books. Uh, these encyclopedia readings and these library books are not necessary. There's plenty of information in the novel itself. However, if you want to add a little bit more, these options are here for you. This is followed by the notebooking section. And basically this will give you the answers that are covered in the chapter that your kids could respond with. So these are things that they could add. Each set of chapters will have a habitat information sheet. So this Grasslands Habitat Information Sheet is for both chapter two and three for information that they'll be learning. And you can see that in the logbook itself. So that's what the Habitat Information Sheet looks like when it's blank. There's plenty of white space here. Your students can write super big and only write one or two words, or they can write super small and have lots of points. So it really makes it customizable for lots of different ages to use the same program. So here's what they could add. You can have them copy some of this information or you can just use it as you guide them to uh, write down certain pieces on here. But basically this is here for your reference. What your students put on their logbook page may be different and that's perfectly fine. So the next thing you'll see is the animal record sheet information. And again, this is the same thing. In your student's logbook, they will have a blank sheet, and then this is the information that they could include on it if you want. So it's there for your reference to make it a little bit easier, especially if you didn't read with them or if you're having them listen to the audiobook, you have the information that they could possibly have on their logbook sheets right there for you. So there will be one for each topic in the logbook. You can see there's one for lions and cheetahs and elephants and giraffes. And those are the four animals covered in chapter two and chapter three. So this chapter two will just have two animals and then you'll have vocabulary options for them. They will have a glossary of terms at the back of their SIDAT logbook. And these terms are in order that they appear in the guide. So for instance, these classification and observation are from chapter one, then you have the chapter two terms, and then you'll have chapter three terms and so on and so forth. So that's how that works. So you'll have the vocabulary there for you, for your reference. There is also in the appendix, you can see a full glossary. So if you want to print that out and have your students copy off the full glossary or use it for your reference as you go through the vocab, that's perfectly fine. So it's there for you. And then we have the demonstration. So you have the materials that you need, you'll have the procedure, what you need to do, and an explanation. So you'll be able to tell your students a little bit more about what you saw. These demonstrations, you're going to be the driving force for them. So the difference between a demonstration and an experiment is that demonstrations are more parent-led and student-observed. That doesn't mean that they can't participate in what you're doing. It just means that you're the one who is following through this procedure and you're the one who's going to be sharing the explanation information with them. So if you want your students to record what you've done to write a lab report or an experiment sheet, we have included that in the appendix. There's an optional lab report sheet, or you can have your students record it in the SIDAT logbook on one of the project record pages. So both of those options are there for you if you want them to record what they've done in the experiment. So after the experiment, uh, we'll have the multi-week projects and activities. Uh, these are things that you will be doing throughout the book. For zoology, we're doing a food chart as to whether the animals eat meat, eat plants, or eat both. 
and you can find uh, materials for that in the appendix. Those are your small animal pictures you can use as you create your chart. And then you'll also be doing, uh, or you can do habitat posters, and you can use these small animal pictures on the poster. And then those are the habitat sheets for you. So we've provided those in the appendix for you for the multi-week projects. And then after those multi-week ones that are gonna last the book, you'll have a couple of activities just for the week. So you can do uh, art projects. Uh, here's a PE type project. But these projects will vary, but there'll be options for you to add a little bit more fun and interest to your week. And then we have what, they, what we call the memorization section. So you can use these copy work and dictation selections as memory work for your students. You can use them as copy work or dictation. Um, and you can swap this around. So if your students are capable of copying more, but not really capable of doing dictation yet, you might want to use this sentence or this set of sentences for their copy work. If they're just learning dictation, you may want to use the copy work sentence instead. And then we've left you some space for some notes. So I do want to mention one more thing in chapter three you will find the around the world sheet. So we try to include a little bit of geography since the twins are traveling from country to country as they're learning about science. We try to give you the information to add a little bit of geography to it. So you'll see here, there's more information for your habitat sheet or for their habitat sheet. But then after the habitat sheet, in their logbook, you will see uh, the around the world sheet. This will be a little bit different in each guide, but there will be some kind of geography sheet included and the information for that will be here in the guide so we've shown you exactly where you can shade in the grasslands around the world and shown you what continents you can find the grasslands on so that's a little bit about all the information you will have each week so in short you'll read a, ch a section from the chapter you'll fill out the record sheet that goes with that section if you're doing one day a week that's or if you're doing five days a week, then that's probably gonna be it for the day. You'll repeat it again for the second day. So as far as what a week will look like, um, you will be reading a section in the novel and then you'll be filling out an animal record sheet and you'll be adding any information to your habitat sheet or to the map sheet. And then you'll be doing your demonstration on another day and a copy work assignment if you want to add that or some of the projects if you want to add those. And then at the end of the week, if you would like to, we have um, added quizzes that will serve for each set of chapters. So if you wanna do some kind of review sheet at the end of every other week, so every two weeks, we've got that information for you too. If you want to see what a week with the activity guide and the logbook looks like, I will link to another video for you of how that works in our house. Either way, thank you for watching this tour through the activity guide and through your SciDat logbook, and I hope you have an amazing journey with science and the Sassafras twins. Thanks for watching.